All right. So hello everyone. Today um, we host Najmia Ozai uh, from University of Michigan. She is a Chenlong faculty, a family faculty development professor of electrical and computer engineering. <laughs> and she is an associate professor of electrical and computer science as well as robotics so uh Nejmi, i am very honored to have you today as my guest um to keep this interview concise and focused i would like to begin asking the first two general questions that i am curious to hear your answers to it's it's my pleasure uh, to be here and thanks for your service to the community uh Ansel. thanks a lot so my first question is as being one of the women role, role models in the control systems field, what inspired you to pursue a career in this field and how did you get started? Uh, I don't consider myself as a role model, but I would say maybe I have good role models to start uh, in this career path. Uh, I, I was always interested in uh, mathematics from a young age. Uh, then I studied uh, electrical engineering uh, in Boaziçi University in Istanbul. Uh, and uh, incidentally, we had a very strong control group there. Uh, and uh, I took some control courses from uh, fascinating uh, people. And I was like, uh, this is really interesting. And this is really where uh, mathematics and uh, engineering meets. So then I was like, OK, I want to do control and that's how I, I, I it wasn't may, maybe too intentional but uh, finding controls within electrical engineering was a, a, a big discovery for me and I'm like this is what I wanted to do that's great thanks a lot the second question is um, so how do you maintain a healthy work-life balance during pursuing a demanding career in engineering and academia for example what hobbies or activities do you engage outside your professional career and what advice do you have uh, to young professionals uh, so th this is this is a this is a hard question so i don't think i have a good work life balance <laughs> i would say uh, uh, i think it's part of uh, this is working on a more theoretical field it's like hard to put boundaries in the sense that uh, for example, I like sports, I might want to go for a walk, but if there was a problem that I thought about during the day, I cannot shut my brain. I am still like thinking about that problem, walking outside or doing some exercise or something. Uh, so in that sense, I think uh, compared to some of the experimental fields, it's a little hard to define the boundary, uh, but that doesn't mean that I don't have a life outside uh, re research. So a few things that I enjoy, I enjoy uh, exercising. Uh, I used to play table tennis. I don't play it that much these days, but that's uh, one thing I really like. Uh, uh, I like movies. I like independent movies. So I, I used to be like, uh, I used to go to all the festivals and stuff back in the days. And I try to catch some independent movies these days as well, as much as uh, I want. And I, uh, I try to spend time with people that I enjoy whose company. And I like, I, I like spending time with uh, friends. Uh, I guess those are the things that I do. Uh, and for advice for young professionals, uh, I think uh, I see it in some students these days. There's this like burned out is a reality. So they shouldn't like uh, work all the time. They should have something to relax. And uh, that downtime gives you better perspective when you come back and look at a question again or a problem again. Uh, so having something uh, to uh, shift your focus uh, is always good. Uh, and uh, I think like, uh, again, this is uh, related to working on a uh, maybe theoretical thing, but I, I, would, I would expect this to be similar in any research field like being stuck with a problem for a long time is not that productive. Uh, and switching focus either to another problem or di different activity, I always find myself uh, more refreshed 
if I stop thinking about something for a while and re-look at it. So uh, I think it's a good strategy for success to uh, to shift your brain to different things. I totally agree. I mean, um, I you know I feel you. I mean, so when I stuck in a problem it goes nowhere but then if you give a break it, it can be i mean my longest break i remember like three months i didn't look at the proof or anything then mm -hmm. submitted the transactions accepted but um yeah, having a break really helps mm -hmm. so um next let us transition to four questions related to research the first question is uh, could you please overview your uh, current research and share what excites you uh, about it uh, so my research uh, has been like that. There were always kind of two uh, threads in my research. One is about like how to make sense of data coming from a dynamical system. And uh, the main example of that is system identification. Uh, uh, or if I want to put fancier words, learning dynamics uh, in a sense. So that was one part of that has been one part of my research. And I am still interested in uh, how to make sense of data coming from a dynamical system. Uh, the other part of my research is related to constraint control, where uh, safety is part of it, but I try to reason about interesting constraints on the system and how to algorithmically enforce such constraints. And now uh, we do a lot of things at the intersection of these two things, where you are collecting data, learning things, reasoning about things, and you still want to uh provide some guarantees on uh, constraint satisfaction uh, with different types of constraints maybe so that's kind of the uh, broader uh, view of my research uh, in terms of like currently what excites me most um, uh, we started looking into some questions on fundamental limits uh, in uh, learning based control so one of the things that uh, is interesting in machine learning, for example, there are lots of papers that you devise an algorithm, maybe you prove some properties of the algorithm, then you show it to work. Uh, and I, I am interested in when things won't work and like proving when things won't work. And we have some recent results on that. I, I think it gives better motivation to coming up with a new algorithm, if we can understand the fundamental limits. Uh, and uh, I think that's kind of like, uh, I sometimes call it myth busting. Uh, uh, so trying to understand when things won't work is something that excites me these days. Well, that's, that's real nice. So my next question is, suppose you had the ability to use your expertise in control systems to address one of today's major major global issues. Uh, which issue would you choose and uh, what would your approach entail? Oh, this is, uh, <laughs> this is uh, difficult. So uh, two things that come to my mind, uh, I am not going to pick one because like, I think there are too many problems uh, in the uh, world these days. Um, one is maybe uh, related to healthcare and uh, aging population and uh, how we can make the world a better place for uh, the entire world population. Uh, and the other is maybe uh, related to global warming and sustainability. And again, this is like, how do we make the world a better place for everyone? Uh, so, uh, it's hard to pick a specific approach, but one thing that I benefited a lot in my career, and I think that's the right approach here as well, uh, is uh, to talk to domain experts. So uh, there are people who invested their lives on uh, healthcare or aging research or uh, sustainability. Uh, and uh, maybe as control engineers, we have the systems perspective uh, and working in interdisciplinary teams and understanding these issues from a domain expert's perspective is, uh, I think, important. So uh, if I have uh, uh, 
time and ability to uh, be part of uh, something like that. I would try to be part of a, a interdisciplinary team with uh, lots of domain experts, and I would want to learn from them uh, and better understand the problem uh, before developing an approach. Thanks so much. I mean, I agree. I mean, controls is very interdisciplinary. So, I mean, we can work with almost any, anyone, just need a good team. The next question is actually um, uh, from Yildra Yildiz. Um, um, what are some research directions within controls, but other than machine learning and AI? Uh, that is not popular today, but you expect it to make a big impact in the future. Uh, that's uh, not an that's, easy question. Yeah, that's an, not an easy question, <laughs> and it's hard to predict impact. Uh, uh, but some of the directions that I like uh, is again this intersection of maybe control and biology and he healthcare. So it's uh, I think that could be a, a short-term impact there. Uh, the other uh, could be things related to uh, energy systems uh, or quantum. So quantum control was popular back in the days, and I think it's time for us to maybe look at it again. Uh, so those are some of the things that come to my mind. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot. The second question, uh, the last question of research is more from a student perspective and I have been uh, getting similar questions, but this is particularly I will read the question from uh, Omar Asiani if I pronounce his name correctly. So when a student starts a research in the fields, right, so it may seem too overwhelming since there are a lot of uh, professionals. Um, that are doing you know, high quality research as compared to a new student. So <clears throat> what was your strategy when you started, uh, like in terms of not to get discouraged, where to start, and how, how did you get into the right track? What, would, what is your advice to the students for new students starting a new research topic? Mm -hmm. uh, so one of the things I usually tell people is to be patient. So sometimes students get so nervous about, OK, I need to find a thesis topic. And I always give the example from myself. Uh, I started working on the topic that became my PhD thesis in my it, at the end of my third year. Uh, in the first three years, I worked on different problems. Uh, and I, I am usually a person that likes trying something and deciding whether it works for me or not, uh, rather than sitting and thinking what would work for me. Uh, so in that sense, I uh, think I, I try to encourage students to be brave to try, try out things, even though it doesn't look like the best fit, uh, because you uh, first gain some experience uh, on solving problems when you start with this little things that you try. Uh, and uh, I usually tell them it's not wasted time if you work on a different problem because uh, you get research maturity and when you find the thing that you really want to work on, uh, all the skills that you develop working on other problems, uh, they help you start really fast on that new problem. Uh, so being patient is, I think, important. Uh, uh, being open-minded is yeah. uh, important. and research is a process so uh, maybe getting used to this sparse rewards in research is th that mindset is uh, important as well maybe if you see a publication as a reward uh, you should also see that like you are building lots of skills working on that problem uh, maybe that's not that much of a visible reward but in the long run uh, those skills uh, are what matters and what makes you a better researcher and address new problems in uh, dif using different perspectives. So that's one thing. And being open-minded, as I said, it's the other thing. Uh, being open to other research areas, like I, when I was a student, I tried to go to seminars in the math department or like uh, 
uh, seminars related to signal processing, image processing, uh, getting this hearing about different fields is important so sometimes you hear something that's new in a different field maybe nobody in your field knows about it but if you can bring that insight to solve an interesting problem in your field that's interesting as well so uh, those are the two things being patient and being open-minded are two things that I would advise I guess I, I, I think that's a great advice thanks a lot so I now would like to sh shift our focus a little bit to education. So I'm going to ask two questions. The first one is based on your uh, expertise in the field, what advice would you give to young professionals who are looking to make a lasting impact on their students and the field of education as a whole? Uh, so that's, uh, uh, that's a uh, good question. Uh, I, I really enjoy teaching but it's uh, i also find it a little exhausting uh, i think being kind of invested in students learning is important and one advice that i got from jesse grizzle at michigan early on in my career that uh, i really found like super relaxing from a uh, instructor's perspective uh, and super useful from a student's perspective as well. He told me, I don't know who, who uh, is the main person, like who the quote is coming from, he, but uh, Jesse told me that uh, teaching is not about covering material, it's about uncovering material. So he said, don't try to like pack too many materials in a course, uh, because if people don't understand that, deeply, it won't last. Uh, and I, I took it as a principle in my teaching. And I think it's like, I try to like go deep in maybe a few subjects and I am okay if I cannot cover this last chapter of the book or whatever. Uh, but I want students to understand this discovery process and deep understanding. So th I think that's important in education and it's it's a good advice that I got. Uh, That's a great advice. So um, so the second one is with the rise of distance learning, online education, AI and everything, right? How do you envision the future of classroom, uh, classroom teaching, especially in the context of engineering and research disciplines? For example, one uh, question that I'm also thinking, I mean, is how do you, how, how do you think the role of the professors will evolve in the upcoming years? Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's a very valid question and it's like it's not uh, upcoming years. I think I, I already feel the change it these is changed, days. Yeah. The, the, the way we interact with students, it's changing. Uh, uh, there is quite a bit of work at the University of Michigan to understand how we can use generative AI uh, as part of our teaching. I think uh, you are one of the first universities or the first university. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, there is lots of uh, activity around that. Uh, and uh, we are trying to understand and use it better. So rather than like ignoring it, uh, just how do we integrate it better in our uh, classes? Um, so, uh, for example, this semester I was teaching a, a sophomore level electrical engineering systems course, uh, and part of that course is integrating things. Uh, and I told students that they can ask ChatGPT if they got stuck on something, rather than saying you shouldn't use. Uh, I was trying to encourage them they should use all possible resources uh, to find a solution. Uh, but also they should be skeptical not to believe. So that with this technology, there's also the problem of misinformation. Uh, so uh, learning how to be skeptical is uh, important in that sense. Uh, personally, I still find this in-person interactions to be more uh, stimulating for myself. Uh, for example, I felt that I struggled a lot during COVID trying to do research on a screen. I really like being in front of the board and like ride around and uh, I think it's a more creative process but maybe because our brains 
are trained that way. Our brains are trained with paper and pencil and like marker and board. Uh, but maybe for the new generation, they can be as creative with their iPads and screens. Uh, I am personally not as creative with the iPad and screen. I still the have this, like more physical things. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I think we will learn how these things will affect all of us. And uh, maybe new generation has a slightly different way of thinking and using these things uh, than us. I agree. Thanks. So in the final part of this uh, short interview, I would like to change the focus to several personal questions that I am eager to hear your answers to. Mm -hmm. The first one is, can you share a memorable experience or encounter you have had with a mentor, colleague or a student that has left a lasting impression on you and of your work? Uh, so that's, uh, that's a uh, good question. Uh, so there were lots of, uh, I would say, coincidences or maybe uh, some lucky incidents that I happened to be somewhere at the right time and I met a person and that affect how my career evolved. Uh, but maybe this is not asking that type of things. Uh, one of the things I think I can give an example is uh, so University of Michigan is a big engineering school. So there are lots of like uh, domain experts here. And uh, I said it earlier as well, trying to work with them taught me a lot. So when I came in to Michigan, I didn't have that much experience with automotive. Uh, and that became a big part of my research for, uh, for a while. And I came in, there was Wei Peng and Jesse Grizzle, they had this big uh, project at the time and I was involved in it and I started talking to automotive companies. Uh, I think uh, this ability to talk to people who really understand some domain questions benefited me uh, a lot. Another example uh, is uh, my collaboration with a colleague in power systems, Johanna Matthew. Uh, we started talking to Johanna about certain power systems problems. At that time, some of the techniques that we were developing, they weren't scalable. And I was telling her, oh, we can never solve power systems problems. They are like too big. But uh, that, uh, like talking to her, it led to a very interesting collaboration. And uh, one of the, it, ended up being one of the main results in uh, the PhD thesis of my first student, uh, where he realized there is some permutation invariance in some of these problems, and he developed a very scalable uh, abstraction-based algorithm uh, with that insight. So uh, I would say collaborating with people from different domains is something that uh, had a big impact on my research. Thank you, I totally agree. I mean, the second one is more like a YouTube type of a question. So if you could collaborate with any famous scientist or engineer from history or simply with a historical figure from the controls field, who would it be and why? OK, so this is, uh, again, I will cheat and I won't pick one person. I will <laughs> maybe pick multiple. Yeah. Uh, so I am really fascinated about computational aspects of uh, both control and computation in general. Uh, so uh, maybe uh, I would say it would be interesting to get to know uh, Ada Lawless to like who started programming in a yeah. sense, uh, or it would be interesting to get to know Ellen Turing who formalize what computation means. Yeah. Uh, so those are some of the uh, maybe older uh, historical figures. Uh, and on the control side, maybe uh, more recent people that uh, uh, influenced me and like they have papers that fascinated me a lot. I would say uh, Roger Brockett and mm -hmm. Jan Williams. So they, they have, uh, very interesting ways of thinking about computation and control. And I really enjoy that in intersection. And they have this like 
really deep philosophical but also mathematical papers that uh, I read with uh, uh, fascination and I, I I would have loved to meet with them and discuss uh, both the philosophy and math behind those papers. Thanks. I think these 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 were the one of the most original picks. So, uh, last question. Finally, if you could give your younger self one piece of advice, uh, what what would it be and why? Oh, that's uh, 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 so. Looking back, uh, I think I was lucky to do many things right, but not knowingly so i like if i look back i did some things that ended up being very useful in my career but i didn't do it intentionally uh, so uh, maybe i would uh, tell myself to do some of the things that i already did uh, so that i would be more intentional doing that uh, Yeah, I don't know if I have something specific, but I would if I uh, go back to my previous answer, like being open minded and being patient and trying out things uh, before deciding what works out and what doesn't work out. I think uh, it was a good strategy that worked out well for me. And uh, uh, I would, as I said, it wasn't intentional, but now uh -huh. I think about it. It's, uh, I think it's a good strategy and I would uh, give that advice to uh, maybe uh, uh, the new generation of researchers. Thanks a lot. So, Nishmi, um, I want to express my gratitude for your time and um, thanks so much for featuring in these uh, force interview series. Thanks. Thanks for uh, organizing this and taking the lead in this. Thanks a lot. <laughs>